something that has a timbre or a color, that a guitar sounds different than a flute and will evoke a kind of a different feeling. That uh, volume, of course, has to do with meaning. And if I were to parallel that with massage, it's like pressure and touch. Sometimes I can really up the volume with my elbow, you know. <laughs> Getting into working on somebody. Duration in music, obviously, if a tone is... That's going to create a different feeling than if I have nice long tones. And of course, in the music for massage, generally the tendency is going to be to have longer tones of longer duration so that you relax and it's more in the rhythm of breath really than in the rhythm of speech. Uh, rhythm, of course, is going to give meaning in music as well as actual frequencies. And what you can find even sometimes is that a lower frequency, in terms of what you may feel in your body, that a lower frequency like a bass note will tend to resonate more with the legs, and the higher notes will tend to be heard as if they were higher in the body. You know how we say music is high, you know, there's a high note, there's a low note, but really they aren't high and low, they're just two notes, but we immediately transpose them into ideas of low and high. And, uh, so emotional content, of course, I can play something kind of uh, small. Or we can say play something. Sad. And also, um, we can use for musical composition the ways in which you can create form and the feeling of you know, real meaning in music. Mozart and Beethoven are able to take certain themes and variations and create a feeling of something developing, of a relationship. Associations from past music also play a role in that uh, sometimes I'll be playing along in the classroom and uh, suddenly, oh, Susanna will occur to me. <laughs> so, I like to uh, play things that have emotional meaning. Now, if we take that into touch then, you look at the quality of touch. Just today I was teaching a class this afternoon and a woman just was talking in praise of the touch quality of the therapist working with her. Fresher, again, see how it's, all, it's the same as music. Duration, rhythm, and the level of the body being equivalent to the frequency of the note. Again, so that the lower note would evoke the lower part of the body. When you're working as a therapist, you can evoke different um, experiences, as you may, with the legs, create more of a feeling of grounding, or with the eyes, create a clearer feeling of, a, of an unconfused mind. And so as therapists, we start to really explore what role the different parts of our body play in the life of our mind, our body, our spirit. And then, of course, emotional content. Touch can be sudden and forceful. Touch can also be loving and nurturing. In massage, of course, we cultivate the nurturing quality of touch. And yet there are infinite varieties of nurturing, from consolatory touch to a compassionate touch to a touch with great, great kindness and tenderness. And so we're looking at what kind of touch, what emotional content really is appropriate for a person, given the particular circumstance that they're in. Uh, that we learn as taking a history. Proprioception has to do with the fact that you create a feeling of, of change of body space when you do a massage. For instance, if you get a good session afterwards, you stand up and you go, wow, I feel like I weigh you know, 20 pounds less. It's a form of psychic dietary uh, <laughs> uh, implications, I think. At least you create the illusion of lightness. And not just the illusion, because when you take tension out of the body, you create a feeling of lightness. You create a feeling of a longer body. You create a feeling like somebody just squeezed WD-40 into your joints. And um, so that changes your proprioceptive experience of yourself. And then associations from past touch. Everybody has a history of their relationships to touch. And whenever we interface with them in a massage, we're interfacing with that history. And the closer I mark and understand somebody, the more I can really make sure that the quality of touch is relevant to them. And even, I would ideally say in the sessions today, the therapists are going to try to get a sense of you. Uh, many of them are extremely experienced, and uh, I would hope that you have great sessions. Where am I coming from? Well, I began as a little folky in Chicago, 
I went, I'm an alumni of the uh, place called Old Town School of Folk Music. It was a beautiful place to study as a kid. I spent every time, every moment of high school where I could get out of Highland Park, Illinois, I was down in Chicago uh, studying at the Old Town School of Folk Music. Then I went to, uh, uh, played a lot of rock and roll, and then went in 67 to study Indian music in Berkeley, California. That was the summer of love. I was such a child. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fascinating to study Indian music. I love the fact that in Indian music, what you do, as many of you may be familiar with, is you really explore uh, simple melodies and scales in great depth. So that's formed a lot of the basis for the guitar playing that I've done in conjunction with the guitar. Really explore simple melodies and scales um, in a way that's very relaxing and uh, interesting. And then, of course, classical musical composition. Oftentimes, what I found, and it's one of my motivations for doing the CD that we've done, is that a lot of music that's used for massage is not actually musically very interesting. It's what I call musical wallpaper, and I have nothing against wallpaper, but I really wouldn't put it up on my wall as art. <laughs> 